And uh, how do you go about getting an exorcism? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the scariest horror movies of all time. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Number 30, It. The first part of a two-part adaptation of Stephen King's novel updated this terrifying horror tale for a modern audience. Kids of the 1980s may always fear Tim Curry's portrayal of Pennywise the Dancing Clown, but IT Chapter 1 introduced a new Pennywise with an even meaner streak. Bill Skarsgård's performance balanced real menace with a perverse sense of humor that helped make IT Chapter 1 feel fresh and exciting. We also have to shout out the child actors, who really sell the fear. This movie is perfect for lots of late-night white-knuckle rewatches. You'll float down here. We'll float down here. Number 29, The Strangers. Are you a sinner? Sometimes. There's just something primal about horror films that are set in those situations where we're most vulnerable. It could be Psycho in the shower or Jaws in the open water, but they make our skin crawl. The Stranger strikes a similar nerve, that fear of our homes being invaded when we're all alone. Of course, it helps that the cinematography here underlines just how frightening that situation can be, as the titular strangers lurk in the shadows. This film is violent, sure, but it's also scary as hell, and isn't afraid to let moments linger for the sole purpose of making us look twice into the darkness. Why are you doing this to us? Because you're home. Number 28, Jew on the Grudge. The international success of this movie may have helped kickstart a bunch of subpar North American remakes, but that doesn't make the OG any less awesome. The supernatural setting of creepy-looking ghosts out for revenge is nothing new. However, The Grudge was able to set itself apart from this horror movie trope with its evocative cinematography and memorable character design. The young spirits of Toshio and Kayoko have since become instantly recognizable cult figures. Ju on the Grudge is already considered a modern classic of Japanese horror and an absolute must-watch for fans of the genre. <laughs> Number 27, Wreck. Jose al volante, Alex y Manu son la patrulla de bomberos que vamos a estar acompañando. Spanish horror has a rich cultural history that dates back to the 1950s and 60s. 2007's Wreck proved that the genre could reinvent itself for the new millennium, this time with its adoption of the found footage style. This film from directors Paco Plaza and Jaume Balagueró makes the most out of an approach that hinges on unpredictability and chaos. The first-person viewpoint, shaky camera angles, and visceral bursts of violence all make us shiver in our seats. Wreck never feels cheap, however, thanks to the quality storytelling and exciting action. <laughs> Number 26, Candyman. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman. The halcyon days of the slasher film may have been in the rear view when Candyman hit theaters back in 1992, but that didn't mean there was no room for a new icon. Tony Todd officially ascended to the genre's Mount Rushmore when his character became one of horror's most recognizable agents of pain. The Candyman's command of bees and his menacing hook are only a couple of reasons why this film works so well. There's also the romantic musical score, the gritty urban setting, and the disgustingly effective practical effects that make Candyman a horror movie for the ages. Be my victim. Number 25, The Descent. <laughs> One of those horror films where the location itself is so tense and frightening that it barely even needs the disgusting monsters. Granted, the reveal of these subterranean beasts adds spice to the scary stew, but we were already uneasy before they even showed up. That's because the descent so expertly drops us down, literally, into the cold darkness of spelunking. The shadows lurk out at us from cavernous walls, and we think we see things that aren't there. Or are they? Add to that memorable characters and a palpably claustrophobic atmosphere, and you have a one-of-a-kind horror movie experience. Hey, hey, 
Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. What are you afraid of? Number 24, It Follows. You can get rid of it, okay? Just sleep with someone as soon as you can. Just pass it along. The analogy of sexually transmitted diseases is part of the reason It Follows felt so fresh back when it was released in 2014. Writer-director David Robert Mitchell may not have completely explained the rules for why the entity follows the way it does or how it can be destroyed, yet it's more about the journey than the destination here. It follows plays with our paranoia as we constantly scan the background for who's on the horizon. The performances and the character's general likability get us invested in the story, while the soundtrack keeps us on edge. This one is destined to become a modern horror classic. See? Everything's okay. Number 23, The Babadook. Never underestimate the power of practical effects. 2014's The Babadook could have easily gone overboard with CGI. Instead, the filmmakers wisely used stop-motion animation and real craftsmanship to bring the titular creature to life. There aren't even any fatalities in The Babadook, but fans don't love this movie for its body count. They love it for the storytelling, the characters, and the themes of grief that permeate its narrative. The Babadook just does practically everything right and makes us care about what's going to happen from first frame to last. This is my house! You are trespassing in my house! Number 22, Get Out. He's dating my sister, you had your chance. I can't get to know the guy. The trope of the body snatcher was nothing new in the horror genre by the time Jordan Peele created Get Out. Yet his film managed to inject new life into this narrative through the exploration of class and race. Get Out also subtly incorporates humor throughout the story. But make no mistake, the film is full of uneasy frights. The existential horror of the sunken place in particular gives us nightmares. Peele's script is smart, taut, and tense and the subtle Easter eggs hidden throughout the film make it eminently rewatchable. Why us? Huh? Why black people? Number 21, Poltergeist. They're here. There's just something special about that first time. You know, those early scares that set you up as a horror fan for life? The original Poltergeist from 1982 is one of the best entry points for young fans seeking to dip their toes into the harder stuff. Like many of the best horror movies, it relies on building an ultra-creepy atmosphere to terrify you rather than using monsters and gore. With practical effects that still hold up today and universally great performances, Poltergeist is one of those movies that's both scary and super fun to watch. A terrible presence is in there with her. So much rage. So much betrayal. Number 20. Sinister. Before helming Doctor Strange, director Scott Derrickson's experience with the supernatural skewed in favor of the spooky stuff. And the crowning achievement of his horror filmography is without a doubt sinister. Bagul, the eater of children. <laughs> Did you say eater? Yes, uh, uh, of children. The story centers on a true crime writer played by Ethan Hawke, who moves his family into a home that once played host to a series of grisly murders. His hope is that this mysterious crime can serve as the basis of his next book. If an image was destroyed, then the gateway would be closed and Bagul would no longer have access to this world, right? Mr. Oswald, what kind of book are you writing exactly? The film is not afraid to embrace haunted house cliches, but Derrickson's mastery over them is such that even when you can see a scare coming, it never fails to hit the mark. Employing elements of found footage to excellent effect, Sinister will make you steer clear of the attic. I made a mistake. I should have never come to this house. Number 19, Paranormal Activity. I would see the, um, I guess you'd call it like the, like just this mass, like the shadowy just figure that would be at the foot of my bed. Told using video camera footage, this supernatural horror combined everything that made the Blair Witch Project and the Amityville horror classics of the genre. The specter doing the haunting is a demon that feeds off of negative energy and has latched itself onto Katie. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with, something that's basically connected to you. In Paranormal Activity, we get to see the psychological damage that prolonged exposure to pure evil wreaks on an ordinary couple. The found footage style makes it feel believable, while also incorporating numerous jump scares. But it's the moments of quiet and static that allow the sudden action to scare us to our bones.
Number 18. The Witch For anyone who feels tired of the same old horror movie tropes, The Witch is a welcome change. It was a witch! Aye. It was a witch, Mercy. You speak a right. Thomason! It was I. Liar! The feature film debut of writer-director Robert Eggers. This period piece is a reminder that there are a lot of different ways to scare an audience. Mother and father will find out what? That you are a witch! Set in the 17th century, the witch follows a Puritan family trying to scrape out a living on their New England farm. When the youngest child Samuel suddenly disappears near the woods, however, the fervently religious family is torn apart by suspicion, bad luck, and, it would seem, supernatural influence. Thomas, take the children outside. What does this to me? What does this? You'll find few jump scares in The Witch. The film takes a slow burn approach that instead gets under your skin using atmosphere, paranoia, and an unrelenting sense of dread. What's that like to live deliciously? Yes. Number 17, The Blair Witch Project. The woods around Halloween time is a creepy enough phenomenon. I don't, think, tell me a little I don't bit want to go about... cheesy. I want to really avoid any cheese. One of the most successful indie flicks ever, The Blair Witch Project's marketing campaign made it the most talked about movie in the US. The fact that the teasers and trailer wet audience appetites while giving away virtually nothing about the plot made the found footage flicks twists and turns all the more shocking. <laughs> Its unknown stars allowed us to empathize completely, which made those surprises even more terrifying. To cap it all off, the simple yet horrifying closing seconds ensured that this film was one of the scariest of all time. <coughs> Number 16. The Silence of the Lambs This movie is one of only a handful of horror films to ever make a serious impact at the Academy Awards. Its handling of themes such as gender identity have made it the subject of much retrospective criticism. But it's not Buffalo Bill's motivations that make this film so terrifying. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. At its heart, The Silence of the Lambs is a story about the abduction and murder of female victims, crimes that feel all too real and terrifying. Now it places the lotion in the basket. <gasps> Please! <gasps> Please! <laughs> Jodie Foster's performance as FBI trainee Clarice Starling was career-defining. And who can ever forget the way Anthony Hopkins inhabited the role of Dr. Hannibal Lecter? He manages to make the former psychologist and cannibal charming, magnetic, manipulative, and ultimately one of the scariest characters in cinema. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Number 15, 28 Days Later. Hello! One of the films that helped kick off the zombie wave of the 2000s, 28 Days Later still holds up. Though many people have had their fill of these brain-eating monsters, 28 Days Later stands apart from the pack. These zombies are cut from a different cloth. <laughs> centers on a young man who awakens from a coma to find that Great Britain has collapsed in the face of a highly contagious viral outbreak. And you do not need to get bitten to contract it. The infected in this film feel like creatures of limitless energy, rabid and animalistic in the way they attack. <laughs> Filmmaker Danny Boyle makes good use of confined spaces, chaotic camera work, and the human capacity for evil to anxiety-inducing effect. What do nine men do except wait to die themselves? I moved us from the blockade, I set the radio broadcasting, and I promised them women. Number 14, Insidious. Written by Lee Whannell and directed by James Wan, the same team behind the Saw franchise, Insidious is in many ways your classic haunted house story. Don't. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it's a very, very solid reminder that tried-and-true scare tactics still work wonders when properly executed. <laughs> After moving into a new home, the Lambert family soon finds themselves plagued by supernatural forces. Dalton, the eldest son, who fell into a coma after going into the attic, seems to be at the center of the activity. What makes Insidious so scary is its relentlessness. 
What? The scares are fast and frequent. But rather than giving audiences a genuine break, the filmmakers use mounting dread and discomfort as the movie's baseline tone. <laughs> Number 13. Rosemary's Baby Rosemary and her husband Guy have moved into a new home and are trying to conceive a baby. But that is where the resemblance to a typical story ends. We have to make a baby. Oh, well. Well, we'll do it. The unfortunate Rosemary soon finds herself the focus of occultists and their malevolent plans for her child-to-be. The idea of a demonic child growing inside you is blood-curdling enough. But the sense of helplessness is ramped up when Rosemary seeks aid, only to have her fears dismissed as paranoia and delusion. Because if you say anything more about witches or witchcraft, we're to be forced to take you to a mental hospital. A memorable performance from Mia Farrow puts the audience right in her shoes. You will never look at your neighbors the same way again after this film. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Number 12, The Conjuring. We don't know what's going on or what to do. Can you help us? Yes, we can. While both Insidious and Saw are remarkable films, most would agree that filmmaker James Wan's greatest contribution to horror is The Conjuring. <laughs> the film centers on paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are hired by the Perrin family when they begin experiencing strange and unexplainable events in their Rhode Island home. Set in the 1970s and inspired by the supposedly true story of the Amityville horror, the film feels like a throwback to classic haunted films of decades past. The scares are solid from start to finish, but it's the performances of this impressive ensemble cast that make the film so effective. You really care about these characters, and that makes every supernatural threat much more visceral. She won't let her leave the house. Why? What do you mean? If we take her out, the witch will kill her. Number 11, The Thing. Just four years after Halloween, John Carpenter made another classic, though no one knew it at the time. I don't know what the hell's in there. It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. The Thing was poorly received upon its release and barely broke even. Over the years, however, it's been subject to one of the most drastic critical re-evaluations in the history of horror. The practical effects used to bring the titular monster to life stand up to this day, and still represent some of the most grotesque but inspired creature designs to ever grace the screen. The gross bodily manipulation was simply too much for viewers back in the 1980s, but this uniquely terrifying vision would go on to influence a generation of horror filmmakers. Number 10, The Ring. Seven days. <laughs> what would you do if your son had seven days until he dies in horrendous fashion? So you know when I'm going to die? And what if your son's fate was inexorably tied to your fate? No! These are the questions that this remake of the 1998 Japanese film attempts to answer in the most unnerving way possible. Fueled by amazing sound design and a gripping score, every moment of the ring will have you recoiling in terror. No need for loads of gore here. With just lots of disturbing visuals, the use of psychological horror, and a haunting vibe, it's no wonder the movie was both a critical and commercial smash. <laughs> Number 9. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hey, you see those buildings there? That's where they kill them. Gritty and foreboding in every scene, this slasher flick revels in the violence and gore that it throws at its audience. When a group of friends decides to pick up a hitchhiker on their way to a family homestead, they have no way of knowing just how horrible their world is about to become. Here's the short version. Awaiting them with open arms and empty stomachs near their destination is a family of cannibals who use the bones of their victims to furnish their home. Among the most wantonly violent films ever made to this day, if this massacre doesn't chill you to your very core, we don't know what will. Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Number 8. The Omen On this night, Mr. Thorne, God has given you a son. In this Richard Donner film, the suspected Antichrist is not in the womb or a crib, but comes in the form of a young and at times innocent-looking child. Prepared to destroy anyone who stands in his way or displeases him, Damien is surrounded by grief, misery, and death. Look at me, Damien! 
It's all for you! Fraught with violent visuals like decapitations and hangings, The Omen doesn't pull any punches as it delves into the life of the world's most evil little boy. Jeremy! Jeremy! No! 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 Incredible suspense and excellent performances, notably from Gregory Peck, make this movie one of the best horror films of all time. He bears a birthmark. A sequence of sixes. So says the Bible to all the apostles of Satan. Number 7. A Nightmare on Elm Street It was the worst nightmare I ever had. You wouldn't believe it. Matter of fact, I had a bad dream last night myself. It's a simple fact of life. We all have to sleep. And, try as we might, we are incapable of staying awake forever. Please, God. This is God. That's why the idea that a horribly disfigured man could literally kill you in your dreams is such a creepy prospect. <laughs> After he was burned alive by parents whose children he'd killed, Freddy Krueger managed to stave off the hell he deserved. Nancy, uh, help me please. Save me from Freddy. While later chapters in the franchise devolve into over-the-top humor, the first film from director Wes Craven is played so seriously that we suggest you do not watch it before bed. Number 6. Hereditary In 2018, cinema-goers were introduced to a new master of horror, filmmaker Ari Aster. No! Oh it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. An unrelentingly bleak and deeply disturbing film, Hereditary pushes the boundaries of the genre in ways that, quite frankly, we didn't know were possible. It immediately drew comparisons to such highly influential pictures as Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. The film doesn't bother with jump scares. It instead shocks with genuinely unexpected and deeply disturbing imagery, from which it refuses to turn away. The tension and overwhelming sense of dread are so pervasive that some viewers may not last long enough to see the mystery unraveled, further bolstered by stellar performances all around. Hereditary isn't just a scary movie. It will shake you to your core. Please stop! Please stop! Please stop! Number 5. The Shining If there's one horror film that beats out The Thing in terms of critical reassessments, it's this one. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, The Shining is undeniably unconventional. Come and play with us, Stanley. It's a lonely, ambiguous, and thoroughly unsettling experience that, while arguably a tale of the supernatural, is fundamentally about one man's descent into madness. The most terrible nightmare I ever had. <laughs> it's a significant departure from the source material written by Stephen King, but a study published in 2004 conducted by King's College London actually labeled it, quote, the perfect scary movie. Give me the bag. Stop it! <laughs> Give me the bag. Yeah! The Shining never fails to terrify, but the answer as to what exactly makes it so scary remains elusive. From set design to the imagery used, The Shining is artful in its approach to inducing fear. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Number 4. Psycho We know what you're thinking. How does this film crack the top five when, relative to the horror movies released in years since, it's so tame? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. The thing is, while Psycho may start off slowly enough, the conclusion that it builds to is incredibly effective. Its ability to scare has been undermined by its own success. Most people already know the story. But show it to someone with no knowledge of the plot and their reaction will be genuine terror. And the initial lack of horror makes the sudden violence and twisted reveals all the more powerful. No one will argue against the fact that Psycho is one of the greatest horror films ever made but it also remains one of the scariest. <laughs> Number 3. Alien Despite the science fiction elements of the story, there can be little debate that Alien is in fact also a horror film. Being stuck inside a claustrophobic environment you can't escape with a mindless creature that only wants to kill you is a creepy idea to be sure. Heck, even just sitting down to enjoy a meal together in this movie becomes a complete nightmare. 
that chestburster scene is forever burned into all our memories. Ridley Scott's space adventure doesn't only grab you by the neck, but also never lets you go again. It inspired a worthy follow-up with Aliens, as well as a slew of lesser sequels and prequels. But the original remains the creepiest and most shocking. <laughs> Number 2. Halloween Michael? John Carpenter's seminal slasher flick may not have invented the genre, but it provided a framework that would be replicated for decades to come. And yet, the 1978 film's ability to pack a punch has not been diluted in the slightest by the countless imitators that followed, including its own many subpar sequels. <laughs> in making this film, Carpenter really found the perfect recipe. Michael Myers, armed with his now iconic mask and imposing physique, makes quite the impression. His commitment to silence adds an extra layer of tension, while Jamie Lee Curtis's breakout performance makes us feel extremely invested. Her fear becomes our fear. Musical cues can make or break a horror film, and the score for Halloween consistently intensifies the scares. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Exorcist You're gonna die up there. Demonic children get us every time. The Exorcist introduces us to Reagan, a friendly 12-year-old girl who becomes possessed by a demon after playing with a Ouija board. Captain Howdy. Do you think my mom's pretty? A terrific and refreshing concept for a horror film was taken to the next level by William Peter Blatty's exceptional screenplay and the amazing direction of William Friedkin. <laughs> Unflinching and truly scary, this is what we'll always imagine an actual possession would actually look like. It forces us to picture how helpless we'd feel if ever this happened to a loved one. Add to that horrifying moments like when Pazuzu tells Father Damien Karras about his mother's fate in hell. This is as scary as scary gets, and undoubtedly a horror classic. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, Damien! Amen. Which horror film frightens you the most? Let us know in the comments. We all go a little mad sometimes. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.